uh, here to take uh, your calls, Denise Robertson and parenting expert Sarah Newton. I did want to say before we start this, is that this is not representative of all students. Uh, we are getting some very terrible calls this morning, but we are also getting calls from students who are saying we're not all sex mad, booze mad, some of us are enjoying university and behaving sensibly. And having yeah. fun. Yeah. And having fun. And that's yeah, the time of your life when you should be having absolutely. fun. But it's the boundaries we're talking here. And, yeah. and what we're talking about is, is, is when that has turned into something else. Yeah, and absolutely. that's precisely what's happened with Emily. Uh, it's a very distressing call. Hello, Emily. Hello. Hi. Um, why did you call? Um, I saw the story about being raped at university. Um, and I went through something similar. Um, when I was at university quite a few years ago, and it's affected my life ever since. This is 16 years ago? 16, yeah. And it still haunts you now? Yes, it is. What happened? Um, it was at a friend's party um, at university, and we were all very drunk. Um, I did meet somebody there, this was the person involved, um, and sort of past about 12 o'clock, I have no recollection until I woke up um, naked on the sofa at his house. And you knew you'd been raped. Yes. Um, yeah. And do you, and and obviously we have to be, to be really really careful here. So absolutely no names. But but you know who did it. Yes, I knew, I knew his name. It was a person I met at the party. Okay. Um, um, but I never told anybody since, and it's affected. Why, relationships. why didn't you say something at the time? Um, because I was embarrassed, and because I was that drunk. People say, oh, you can't remember. Obviously, nothing happened. Mm. Mm. It's quite scary. Denise. Well, the good news is that it is never too late to do something. If it has haunted you for, what, 16, 16. years, yeah. it's time the haunting stopped. And we'll make sure that you know where you can go to, just, to get rid of all that terrible debris that's up there at where the back can of you your go? mind. You can go st to a rape crisis centre or to some of the helplines that we have at any time. And I have had people write to me after 50 years. Right. Never, never too late. Yeah, it is never too late, and you've taken the first step today by ringing. It's a really, really brave, courageous thing to do, mm. and I think this shows how much it haunts people. You know, it doesn't go away, and I think no. we have to deal with it, and we have to get the help we need. To did, you ever, did you ever tell anybody, anybody close to you, or do you ever talk about it with anyone? The first people that I've told is you at this morning. Wow. And I've you never wait... told anybody, even um, my best friend that I live with, I couldn't bear to tell anybody. And what about, what about now? Now you've said this out loud to us are there people around you you can talk to and discuss it with not really to be honest no one in your family yeah. knows maybe my mum but it'd be very hard mm. are you married emily no i'm single i have been for quite a few years the long relationship was three years yeah i just I find it very hard are you close to your mum yes thankfully <laughs> could you talk to her about it um, I could talk to her about it, I think. What would you say? I would say that it's best to talk to a third party yeah. first. You love your mum so much that yeah. you, the last thing but you need to do... Well, the reason I said that is she thinks her mum suspects. Well, it may be that when she has got rid of some of the angst and the tears that will come yeah, and the in. pain, <laughs> after that, Maybe you can talk to your yeah. mum. That's your choice, who you right. talk to and when you do it. The important thing is that you talk to somebody now. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, the genie is out of the bottle now. Mm. We know. We sympathise. We you. will make sure that you can talk to somebody who can help. And then maybe talk to your mum and say, Mum, I'm OK now, which she couldn't say initially uh, right now because she's not OK. Mm -hmm. So if she, if she moves on a bit, and then, Mum... Maybe dialing our number today was the first yeah. step of... Uh, of, of exactly. N I don't think you ever get over something no, like that, obviously, but, but maybe yeah. it is the first step of you feeling better about yourself and about your future and just being that little bit more positive mm. and it may be not haunting you quite so much. Yeah, and getting right. rid of the guilt, I think. A lot of rape victims feel so much guilt and they keep yeah. it in and actually when we speak, we let go of that guilt and we start to heal, which mm. I think is so important. Uh, mm. When I woke up, I literally just left and I've no idea 
Yeah. Yeah. Two years, never seen him again. But since you've got nothing, didn't want to know. No, nothing yeah. to feel ashamed about, no, Sarah. Absolutely not. Absolutely and, nothing. And, and nor should you feel guilt. If mm. you feel guilt, it's misplaced. Mm. You didn't rape anybody. Mm. 